This is an unrehearsed sales interview with our two other insurance salesmen, Reed Britton and Ben Silver, who will act out a simulation with Ben Feldman. In this scene, Mr. Britton and Mr. Silver are playing the owners of the Ajax Real Estate Development Company. For 12 years, they've been buying and developing land. They build industrial real estate leasing property, mostly warehouses, together with some front office space. There are a series of these, consequently Mr. Britton and Mr. Silver have some land they bought in advance, some mortgages they're getting paid down, and some new mortgages. Their bank cooperates with this plan. Their net assets, if split down the middle, would be approximately two million each. Other than their home, personal life insurance, and a few small investments, everything is tied up in the Ajax Real Estate Development Company. Recently, they received a letter from Mr. Ben Feldman stating that he had an idea. They have an appointment with him today. They're greeting him now. How do you do, Mr. Feldman? How do you do, Mr. Britton? How do you do, Mr. Silver? Nice to meet you people. Nice to know you. I appreciate your courtesy. I'll try not to waste your time. I know you've been very successful. I've seen your advertisements from time to time in the building, your building, and you're adding a great deal to the wealth of the community and creating employment for, <clears throat> for for people in the community. And yet, you know, you're running hard, you're making money, but you're locking it up. It's very tight, I imagine, from time to time you find it necessary to go down and borrow money. And what I'm trying to say to you is, you've always got something going, something pending, haven't you? Oh, yes. Now, would you agree that you need time and will always maybe need time to complete your projects and there'll always be something else pending? What do you mean by time? When you build a project, it probably takes, uh, well, may I just ask you, how long does it take to build uh, the sort of a venture you're building down on 3rd Street, the, the big shopping center? How long does it take from the beginning to, to the time, that is, uh, the tenants are in? Well, from the time we present this to the architects until we get it built, takes uh, pretty close two and a half years. Two and a half years. Boy, that's a long time. In the beginning, while you're building, I suppose you probably have um, access to money, maybe construction money that you go down and you get. We get our construction money once uh, uh, we, uh, get, we get a commitment from the bank, once we get a certain number of leases signed, and uh, once um, we get all of our architectural and engineering plans complete. Then we start making draws against uh, our, our um, construction money. I see. May I ask our, our uh, uh, sometimes in the company I find two very successful men, the one's an inside man, one's an outside man. Is that the way you gentlemen operate? Yes. One is out making sure that the wheels go around and go around properly. One is inside making sure that the, the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted and so on and so forth. So you're very important to one another, aren't you? Yes, actually, that's Reed's job. He's the one that dots the I's and makes certain that all the legal and difficult technicalities are taken care of. If I were to ask you to give me $500,000 now in cash, would it, would it bother you? <laughs> Pardon me for laughing, Mr. Feldman. Uh, cash is something that we really very rarely have. We put our money to work constantly. And all we would get with cash would be just regular bank interest, and we can turn that over many, many times in our development. Well, you know, something happened to your associate, Mr. Britton. His wife, and she won't be his wife, she'll be his widow, could very well come to you and say, Look, Internal Revenue is asking me for not $500,000, but possibly $750,000, and they want the money. And where am, I going, where am I going to get it? So everything my husband owned was here with you. Can you give me the $750,000? Well, that wouldn't be any problem at all, Mr. Coffin. We, uh, we have a tremendous line of credit. We, we have plenty of assets to back it up. All we'd have to do is go to the bank tomorrow, and we could get certainly that money without any problem. And you feel that you could get that money. You know, normally, when uh, if I were a banker and you came to me to borrow money, I, normally, I'd ask you what you're going to do with it. And you'd say to me, you're going to plow it in here, plow it in here, plow it in here. He's going to ask you this. How are you going to answer it? May I ask you that? Where are you going to plow it in? What are you going to put it into? I would tell him the facts. 
Well, then there will be no security for the 750000 will there? Uh, well, the security would be me, Mr. Coleman. Both Reed and I are familiar with the entire operation of this business to the point where if anything happened to either one of us, the other one could carry on without any problem at all. Uh, even though we have our respective positions, we've, we've done that uh, enough planning to the point where we know the, all the facets of the business. Plus, uh, in addition to that, we have developed a fine organization with, with good backup men. So uh, I feel that the bank would go along with any problem that we'd have because they'd be fully confident that our organization would continue. If your partner, Mr. Brenton, or may I call you, Reed? Surely. If he were to go away for a weekend, it wouldn't bother you. You could manage. If he were late getting back the next week, it wouldn't bother you. Suppose he went, went away for a month, would that bother you? Well, he has been away for a month, and uh, I, I will say that I do miss him, yes. If he went away, if he took a long vacation and was gone for a year, would that bother you? Very definitely. Well, someday he's going to walk out and he's never coming back. Would that bother you? Yes, it would. Because not only do you have to do his work or find someone to do what he'd been doing, and, you know, he's very good. He's a keen man. One, because this is his own money that he's working with. Number two, he's stubbed his toe along the way a time or two. And because he did that, he learned and he became better and better and better. So it may take a while for you to find and train another man who may also stub his toe a time or two. Now, it's going to be awfully hard for you to do everything you're doing now and everything he's been doing. It's going to be doubly hard to take $750,000 out of your bank or out of your company and give it to his family. It's going to restrict your ability to borrow money, more money, even if you can do this. You know, there is another way. As long as you're both here, no problem. But if either man walks out, the widow can't step into that man's shoes. With all due respect to Mrs. Silver, you don't want her as a partner. What could she contribute? No, I don't think I would. I'm sure that she would say, look, Reed, um, I'm not qualified to work. I, uh, and she really isn't, nor is my wife qualified to work. And they've been raising families, and and they don't have any uh, training as secretaries and so on. Now, I'll, I'll tell you, Ben and I have talked about this, and someday we can see that we've got to either have a definite plan for continuity or we've got to have a complete bailout. And we haven't concluded which way to go. Now, Ben has two daughters. We expect that they will marry two very fine sons. And in all probability, those two sons might someday fit into the business. Nothing would please us more than to make way for them. And uh, I have a feeling that my two sons are looking very eagerly to joining this business someday. Well, Reed, that's wonderful. You know, if you can build continuity, then all the effort and all the headache and all the heartache that you put into going from there all the way up to here, wonderful. And then your boys can step into your shoes and carry it on. It's a lifetime of effort that isn't lost, that isn't wasted. Now they can carry it on. For your family, the return on the business is much more than the return on the money itself would be wonderful. But in order to keep together what you've put together, you'd better take care of the other man. I don't mean you, I don't mean you, but Uncle Sam's everybody's partner, and he will want 20% of everything you own. He'll want 25, he'll want 30. The bigger you get, the more he'll take, and you simply can't pull that kind of money out of an operation without hurting it. Now, Mr. Feldman, uh, we've sort of Naturally, we've thought about this. As you know, we pay income taxes every year, and consequently taxes are not completely foreign to us. And uh, we've had friends who have died. Now, I have a friend who died, and his family told me that they had an interesting way to pay this off over a 10-year period that the government has provided. In other words, he was a stockholder in this little company, doing very well, and... Uh, when they came up against this estate tax problem, uh, they arranged with the government to pay it off over a 10-year period, and I think they only charged 4% interest. Uh, that's right. Uh, fantastic method, and I think that would probably be the answer to our problem, Ray. Yeah, that's, that, uh, yeah. that's one reason I haven't panicked over this before. I've sort of felt that we had a way out. We had time. But you do, you do have to pay what must be paid. 
Yes. Oh, but, yes. You, but you do get time to do it. Yes. Ten years, as we understand. Now, of course, we haven't gone into it too thoroughly, but we haven't been that concerned about uh, this problem. Well, I understand. No one plans on dying, only on living. I don't think I'm going to die today. And we all feel that way, so we plan on living. But, you know, you do have to pay it, don't you? Whatever it turns out to be, if it's $2 million or 500000 or whatever it turns out to be, you, you you have time to pay it, but you do have to pay it. And you'll pay it plus interest. Only 4% of the time. Well, right. if you'll give my company just the 4%, I'll pay it for you. Say that again. If you'll give my company just the 4%, we'll pay it for you. If you'll give me the 4%, we'll pay the 500 And then we'll have to pay you back the 500 No. No, there is a contract. If you can qualify, there is a plan, there is a policy, which you won't pay for. Your company will. But it will be owned by paid for and payable to your company. And there is a method of using that to pay the cost, all the cost, of settling your estate. Why don't you let me put something together? We're talking about big fees. Men run hard. Sometimes they fall apart. Not all at once, but a little bit each time, each day, each month. There have been a good many days, I imagine, when you woke up with a headache, didn't feel quite as good as you'd like to feel. See, we're beginning to fall apart. Why don't we find out if you're eligible for a certain kind of a policy? Well, Mr. Feldman, uh, I, I, I think Reed and I may have overlooked telling you that uh, and this may be also a partial answer to the problem, uh, that several years ago we took out some insurance, and I believe they called it Key Man, and we have it payable currently to our company, and that certainly uh, was a fairly substantial amount. How much was that, Ray? Oh, that was 150000 a piece. Mm -hmm. And that's not assigned to a bank. Oh, no, no. That's payable directly to our company. And that would come into the company. Right. And uh, we felt that that money could also be used for uh, taxes or whatever other reason it was or for the loss of any one of our abilities or services if one of us died. Was that quite a little while ago, a year ago, five years ago? Uh, it was about uh, six, seven years yeah. ago, mm -hmm. thereabouts. Yes. Would you know, you're a very successful company. You're a lot bigger now than you were six years ago. Furthermore, that was key man insurance, and I realize it comes in, can be used however you choose to use it. But if he walks out, I doubt if $150,000 will replace him. You're going to need something to lean on. But over and above that, the day he walks out, he's your partner, so his problems will become your problems. And his family can only look to you and his estate is so intertwined, can only look to you. This is where they have to look for the money they need to pay what has to be paid. The $150,000 is a nice cash cushion to give you a little time to go find another man and train the other man and pay for the mistakes the other man might make to gradually replace him. But Uncle Sam might not wait that long. He wants to pay quickly. The tax on the estate will be very dramatic and very realistic. I have a book full of who's who in America, from presidents of the uh, United States down to Boeing, down to, to the richest men in the country, showing what happens. And rarely is there enough liquidity in the estate to pay what must be paid. And this won't get better. This won't get better. As you get bigger, it will get worse. You know, Mr. Feldman, I've been listening to you, and uh, we bought 150,000 years ago. This, I think we're paying around seven, eight thousand dollars a year. I've forgotten for this. Uh, if we were to be buying the the amount of insurance that might be somewhat uh, equal to our taxes, and then you consider that Ben and I are both now six or seven years older, we'd be paying a tremendous amount of money, and that might interfere with the profit making. Uh, ability of the company because we would be tying too much money up in some area where it's non-productive. You see, we feel that maybe our working capital is worth 20% uh, per year to us. Well, you don't hesitate to borrow money from your banks. Not a bad. No. Should, a, should, a, should something good prevent itself? 
No, no, I should say not. The money makes money. You needn't build equity in the plan. You needn't build cash value, only face value. We will finance the plan for you at bank rates of interest. And instead of you paying, let's say, $4,000 for a $100,000 policy or 20000 for a half a million dollars, or let's say 40000 for the million dollars that seems to be indicated here, the New York Life will put in 75% of it, subject to an interest factor. You put in just 25% of it. So we're back down to where your outlay is only maybe $1,000 a month, other than interest. And the day either man walks out, half a million walks in. If you don't do it that way, you'll have to do it your way. Your way is to get down to the bank. Your way is to borrow the half million dollars. Now, if you don't do it that way, you'll spread it out over a period of time. And even at 4%, 500000 is still 20000 a year in interest only. And you still have to pay the 500000 You've got a good point, Ben. Uh, yes, he, he does, but... Uh uh, Reed, uh, I think we're going to have to talk this over. There's a lot involved here, not only money, but uh, you recall that uh, our attorney has often told us not to jump into anything, and he's spent considerable time in working with us. Uh, he, in fact, he recently prepared some new wills for us. So we're pretty well taken care of in, in every sense of the word. Uh, uh, your point is well taken, uh, Mr. Feldman, but... Give us a little time to think over what you're talking about, well, and we'll uh, we'll let you know. Well, that's wonderful. Really, really is. But you know, with all due respect to your liar, my liar, anyone's liar, you see, he won't pay your bill. He may fill you them out. He may state in a buy-sell agreement, if I die, you buy. But somebody had better create the money. If you don't do that, you better borrow the money. And frankly, if there isn't money around, you know how he gets money? He liquidates assets. Do you want your company liquidated? No, we sure don't. If you want continuity for your company, that's, there are only two ways to get money. Borrow the money or sell something. Maybe you can borrow the money from the bank, but if you do, you better pay it back. He's going to look you right in the eye and he's going to say... Can you pay it back? Can you pay it back? Can you do everything you've been doing, everything your partner's been doing, and still do it as well, and take this obligation on, and, and, and promise to pay it back, and until you pay it back, you pay the interest on it. Why don't you let me pay it? There are all kinds of tools. You use the one that fits. This is a tool designed to fit. I'll ben, put it together. Ben, I think he has a good idea. Listen, uh, Mr. Feldman, what we would like to see you do at this point is uh, go back to your office, put this thing in writing, put the figures together, give him your age, Ben, I'll give him mine, and uh, then let's see how it looks on paper, and you know it, it's only a week until our auditors are coming out to do some uh, year-end planning. Uh, why don't we spend uh, a little time with our auditors uh, once we get Ben's Good idea. Good idea. Well, that's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But let's do one more thing. Could we do one more thing? You know, I can put figures together. And on the outside, you look wonderful to me, but I don't know about the inside. And I can give you a projection that may turn out to be entirely wrong. You look to be 50 years of age, and maybe you're 60. I don't know. And your doctor can't tell me this. Our life underwriting committee can, because they're looking down the road and measuring how far it's going to be. Take time for the medical. It won't take more than an hour at the most. And then what I bring you and what you show your auditor will be authentic and dependable. These rates will be accurate. Would you do that? Well, uh, Ben, uh, Reed and I jog every day for about three miles. So we know we're in excellent health. We play tennis on the weekends. Uh, we have regular physical checkups. There's no problem there. We, we know that we can pass. Isn't that right, Reed? And Ben's running around these projects all the time, and I'm That's running up right. down these stairs. That's no I'll problem. tell you, we've... We're a couple of youngsters, I think, <laughs> That's right. And you know that I'm just completing a case with another firm. There are also developers, and there were three of them, and one of them died very suddenly, very unexpectedly. They had to come up with a million dollars to pay the widow. And they did it, but boy, it was a load. And he apparently was in good health, and he had a coronary. And you know, a personal friend of mine recently who was... Always exercising. He had a bicycle at home. He watched his food. He didn't want any fat on the steak. Everything. 
You know, he died. He had a coronary unexpectedly. He wasn't overweight. He wasn't anything. I can give you a rate book full of figures, but I don't know if they'll fit. Go so one step farther. You're going to spend time with your auditor. I bet your auditor charges you 50 bucks an hour. You're going to spend time with your auditor. Let me give you a projection that I know will be accurate. And if you elect to move ahead on it, this is what it will be. I'll arrange a time that's convenient for you. If Monday isn't convenient, we'll find some other time during the week. It won't take that long. I'll ask the doctor not to keep you waiting. Well, listen, I'm going out of town, uh, let's see, on Tuesday... Uh, any chance uh, I could probably see him before then. How about you, Ben? Well, I just want to be sure of one thing. Now, we don't want to be under any obligation. Let's make that perfectly clear, Mr. No, Coleman. no obligation. If I can give you something you feel after study will do something for you, then we'll have a premise to work on. This concludes the simulated interview as acted out by Ben Silver and Reed Brinton with Ben Feldman. Dynamic Ideas in Selling. Dynamic Ideas by Which to Live, shared with us by Ben Feldman, field underwriter for the New York Life Insurance Company. Thank you, Ben, for being the guest of Farnsworth Great Sales Ideas. Mm -hmm.